While there's no denying that those quick play Palutenas in zero suits might give you a run for your money, chances are you're not playing the worst matchup in the game. But what is the worst matchup? How's it going, Smashers? My name is Bonk, and in this video, we'll be taking a look at some of the worst matchups in Smash Ultimate. If you need help learning a matchup, picking up a new character, or just want to get better at the game, there's no better place than ProGuides.com, where you can learn from the best with our 24-7 live coaching. So don't forget to check us out over on the website. After the video, of course. Before we get into today's video, a brief disclaimer. How difficult a matchup can be is something that can't be objectively determined. While certain matchups may sound unwinnable in theory, nobody is perfect. The outcome of a set will always involve some degree of human error, gaps in matchup knowledge, and disparities in skill, which can alter the results quite a bit. And that's not to mention the fact that the meta is constantly evolving as well. Try to keep that in mind while you're watching this video. With that out of the way, let's just get right into it. This first matchup is one you might have expected, as it's notorious for being one of, if not the single worst matchup in the game. Ganondorf vs Pikachu. There's a lot to unpack here, so let's start with the neutral. Unsurprisingly, the neutral is an area in this matchup where Pikachu can quite literally do... Uh, whatever he feels like? Mash short hop back air? You got it. Full hop thunder jolt? Sure thing. You're even free to do nothing but whiff punish with grabs, and Ganondorf still has little to no legitimate counterplay. He's too slow, his frame data is too bad, and he doesn't have options to safely take initiative, nor to force the opponent to do so. If the Ganondorf player manages to establish a substantial lead early on, they may be able to find counterplay by jumping over Thunder Jolts and waiting for the Pikachu to approach, but getting that initial lead is a monstrous feat, and Ganondorf still has to outplay the Pikachu on multiple fronts to counter their most prominent approach options. While he does have some niche responses to specific things, such as directly challenging low Thunder Jolts with Wizard's Foot, or attempting to hit Pikachu through Full Hop Thunder Jolt with his Forward Air or Neutral Air, these options are iffy at best, and not reliable enough to save the neutral from being effectively unwinnable. To add insult to injury, not only is neutral absolutely horrible, but Pikachu destroys Ganondorf once he gets in. Being a big-bodied super heavyweight with a frame 4 air dodge, in addition to having one of the worst recoveries in the game, allows Pikachu to have a field day with Ganondorf once he gets the advantage. Getting nair looped across the stage, back air chained into nasty edge guards, and even getting timed out are just a handful of things the Ganondorf player can look forward to in the matchup. With all of this in mind, we think this may be one of the worst matchups in Smash Ultimate. This next matchup is a bit of an uncommon one. Let's take a look at Piranha Plant vs Villager. Piranha Plant's design is an interesting one to say the least, as he's one of few characters where you could say that there is a single move keeping him from being the worst character in the game. Patui is integral to Piranha Plant's game plan, and is used for everything from zoning, to anti-airing, comboing, ledge trapping, fishing for trades, and much more. Fortunately for Plant, Patui travels in an arc, which means that unless they literally jump into it, they almost never have to worry about Patui being reflected. What if, instead of reflecting it, you just took it? That's where Villager's Pocket comes into play. Pocket allows Villager to snatch Patui out of the air for absolutely nothing in exchange. No commitment, no risk, and when he gets it, it becomes a substantially better projectile than it is when Plant uses it. For one, there's no spitting or blowing animation, and he simply takes it out and tosses it. This lets Villager throw the projectile faster, and the animation has less end lag, making it safer on whiff. In theory, the reduced end lag would make it better for combos as well, if it weren't for the fact that pocketed Batui hits like a literal truck. Dealing over 40% and killing Plant at around 50 near the ledge, 
Pocketed Patui is one of the most dangerous projectiles in the game, putting moves like Charge Shot and Kafriz to shame with how powerful it is. This means that Piranha Plant practically cannot use Patui, with rare exceptions to be made when Villager is irreversibly committed to something, such as Up B while recovering. This also means that Plant loses one of their most important tools for dealing with projectile zoners, and has to rely on their not-so-great normals to find openings in Villager's wall of projectiles. Disadvantage can be rough as well, especially while recovering, and Plant has virtually no way to avoid getting hit by a bowling ball if they're forced to up B offstage. With this matchup being one where a character's defining game plan is quite literally invalidated, we think this may be one of the worst matchups in Smash Ultimate. The next matchup we'll be looking at is Samus vs. Duck Hunt. This is one you might not have expected, so we'll go ahead and explain just what makes this matchup so difficult. While it sounds like the matchup would just be two zoners, um, having at it, Samus doesn't exactly get to play her game. That's because Duck Hunt's wall of objects, from the can of beans to the wild gunman, completely devours Samus's charge shot. This restricts access to her most important zoning tool, and once Duck Hunt sets up shop, there's effectively no way for her to win the imminent projectile war. This wouldn't be all that bad if she had approach options, but that's something she's unfortunately lacking in, which gives her no choice but to wait for the Duck Hunt player to make a blatant error in their zoning pattern. Not only is the neutral a challenge, but Samus also struggles in the disadvantage as well. Duck Hunt is capable of setting up a wall of projectiles at the ledge, which when combined with their decently fast normals, makes it nearly impossible for Samus to escape the corner with proper play from the Duck Hunt. The matchup may not be completely unwinnable, and Samus can get a lot done if she manages to get in, but that's a huge if, and it's unlikely that she'd make such headway at the top level. What we end up seeing is a painfully long game of Duck Hunt safely dealing chip damage from across the stage and coming in to collect his due once Samus is well beyond reasonable kill percents. It's not a matchup we see too often, but we have reason to believe that this may be one of the worst matchups in Smash Ultimate. Another notoriously bad matchup in Smash Ultimate is Young Link vs. Shulk. Heavily disadvantaged matchups aren't all that common amongst high and top tier characters, because they're simply good characters. Young Link vs. Shulk is an exception to this, because Shulk simply ticks all the boxes when it comes to things that directly mitigate Young Link's strengths, and things that take advantage of his weaknesses. Massive sword to eat through his projectiles and harass him from the mid-range? Check. Aforementioned sword, which is also capable of exploiting his short, stubby hitbox recovery for effortless edge guarding? Check. Shield art during hit stun to escape his combos, which Young Link is reliant on to deal damage and secure stocks? Also check. Young Link just cannot catch a break in this matchup, and his only counterplay boils down to looking for high-risk parries on landing aerials, or praying that the Shulk player isn't comfortable dealing with projectiles. This matchup isn't completely unwinnable, and with enough substantial outplays, Young Link players have managed to take a game here and there at the top level. Nonetheless, it's easily a candidate for hardest matchup on a high-tier character, and we thought it was worth a mention for that alone. The final matchup we'd like to take a look at is Luigi vs. Simon and Richter, who we'll collectively refer to as the Belmonts from here on out. Luigi, as a character, practically lives and dies by his grab. While there may be some niche setups involving his aerials at lower percents, and he can occasionally set up into things with moves like down tilt and up tilt, his most substantial punishes almost always come from grabs. This, combined with some very small hitboxes, as well as incredibly poor mobility in the air and on the ground, makes for a character that often struggles to find an opening. Then we have the Belmonts, who have some of the largest, most disjointed normals in the game with their chain whips, as well as numerous projectiles to control space in the neutral. You can see where this is going. The Belmonts are gonna sit there in zone, and Luigi is never going to be able to get in. 
Between the crosses and whips flying everywhere and their superior aerial mobility, the Belmonts are able to exert complete control over when Luigi is allowed to play the game, and in theory, that might just be never. The Belmonts being the Belmonts, their ledge trapping is as effective as ever in the Luigi matchup, and they're able to use their generous hitboxes to take advantage of his notably poor landing options as well. Luigi can deal some serious damage if he manages to get in, but getting to that point is going to take a massive skill disparity. For these reasons, we think this may be one of the worst matchups in Smash Ultimate. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching, Smashers. What do you think is the worst matchup in Smash Ultimate? Let us know in the comments below. While you're down there, don't forget to subscribe and click that bell so you can be notified when we upload new videos. That's all, and we'll see you guys in the next video.